Leo, finally, good to see you face to face. How are you? Great, thanks, Christopher. How's your day been? Uh, today, today's been hectic and productive. Um, yeah, a good, a good combo. Good combo. Looking forward to Friday, or does that not, in the startup world does it really not make much of a difference? No, no, I'm definitely looking forward to, to Friday. So yeah, it's the end of the Euros. It's, it's it'll be a calmer weekend. There'll be um yeah, there'll be a, it's the last weekend of the Tour de France. Opportunity for Cavendish to um, break the all-time world record for the number of Tour de France wins. So. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Are we gonna Are we gonna visit what happened last weekend, or are we just gonna? Listen, I was I was already out of the tournament. I'm half French, half Scottish. So. <laughs> yeah, that's why. See, that's how we give the intro. So, Leah, you're half French, you're half Scottish, you're co-founder of Matchpoint. Just tell us a bit more. Tell the guys a bit more who you are. Yeah. Um, half French, half Scottish. Uh, um, grew up in, in London mostly. Went, went to the lycée. I, um, I guess the interesting part of the journey is... Uh, I was working in a bar in 2007 during the Rugby World Cup in France. I was working in Paris, uh, which is where I first encountered the idea of, of Match Pint. Um, back in 2007? Back in 2007, where um, I, was in, I was 18. I was working in a, in a sports bar where we had to stand up on, on the bar every time France were playing the rugby matches and we had to sing La Marseillaise. Uh, it was it was good times, and it was really where I got immersed in the whole sports venues, enjoying sport with friends in in pubs. Um, Were you one of those cool bartenders with, with all the moves that I won't I won't say that Mr. Hurts behind me. <laughs> it's, it's a long time behind me. We um, and I remember thinking this is a really great idea. Like how there, there was a platform that came in that was saying here are the, what are the best bars in Paris showing showing rugby. Um, and I remember thinking, God, it'd be so great if there was something like that in London and in the whole of the UK. Um, and two years later, I was at university in, in Manchester studying international business, finance and economics. And one of my modules was to write a business plan. And I started writing a business plan around, uh, around Match Pint. And... Um, yeah, and, and my lecturer said this. I is, heard, yeah, I heard about that. Please do carry on. What did my, they say? My lecturer was like, this is not a terrible idea. You should really, uh, you should really indulge this. You should really engage in it. Um, and so I did. And then by the time I'd left university, we built a minimal viable product. Um, I'd raised a bit of investment, got a first bit of a team together. We're starting to sign up bars in London. I called up my most intelligent friend who was just off doing a double first in Cambridge. Um, and I was like, Hey, great. You know, can you come and, and help a little bit on this like mini project? And he was like, great. I'll give you a couple of weeks of my time. Um, and then I said like, do you know what you should, you should work for this. And he was like, piss off. Yeah. I've got, <laughs> well, yeah, I've got a double first from Cambridge. I can do way better things than this. Uh, and I said to him, if you haven't found a job by October, uh, and this was about July, August. I said, if you haven't found a, a, a job by October, like, yeah. Might as well. Might as well. Might as well. And then I spent every waking minute with him for the next three months. Didn't even give him a chance to write a CV. Um, and 10 years later, Tom's my co-founder. So. What a story. Well, again, we are going to get into that. But, I mean, look, it's all about sport. Match is all about sports. What's your favorite sport? My favorite sport... I love I love a bit of niche stuff. I mean, my favourite sport is definitely is definitely rugby. My, the French rugby team really capture something for me. But then I love Julien Philippe is a Tour de France cyclist. I love I love really random stuff. I love like skeleton bobsleigh in the Winter Olympics. <laughs> you know what I mean? That stuff. <laughs> it's so random, but that you can get so much energy from it. Because it's not what everyone basically focuses on. You feel like this could be the underdog. This could give... Yeah, I wouldn't watch it in a sort of random thing. The Olympics is coming up in Tokyo. There'll be some random thing, like the, I don't know, the shooting or something that will suddenly become archery. It will suddenly become an incredibly exciting, last minute, like tense affair, like the canoeing. And you know, the stuff that you're just like, I would never watch this, but because it's high level Olympics and you see the passion in people, it suddenly becomes exciting. 
is is that what is that kind of what happened with um, I think you guys once said with boxing prior to Anthony Joshua actually winning at the Olympics it wasn't as popular basically yeah no, no absolutely I mean the Olympics is definitely a, a platform via which a lot of a lot of sports become more and more famous uh, and it's interesting because the Olympics are really engaging with some very new age sports now you know the BMX the, you know, the it, it's great there's a real there's a real show in there so what's match point what 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 is it We've been, you know, a bit of an intro done now, but let's let's give people uh, well, a bit of an idea. Let, let me give you, before I go into like what it is, let me tell you why we're doing it, right? By all means. Why, why Match Point exists? Because it's a, it's a platform that connects sports fans uh, and bars and, 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 you know, brings people together to enjoy sport. But but why? why? Why did we build this company? We built this company because you really care... And we're really passionate about this, this, this thing that happens when you bring sports fans together to enjoy sport together. There's this bizarre ecstasy energy that people get when they watch a random sports event. Like if anyone's watching this right now, think about any time in your life when, yeah, it might have been just a, a month ago during the football, during the Euros, but like your favorite moment as a sports fan. Everyone remembers exactly where they were. This could be like 20 years ago. Absolutely. Exactly where they were, who they were with. Christopher, what's yours? Van Persie scoring that goal for Manchester United when they secured that title. I will never, ever forget that. I was uh, in uni. It was, we were supposed to be studying for exams. I couldn't do it. I had, I think, an exam the next day or the day after. But I remember sat down and jumping off my seat. Me and my best mate, we were on our own. We booked a room, we were supposed to be studying. And we started screaming our lungs off literally I will never forget that so yeah that's great you can't forget some moments it's just impossible they're, to forget they're, they're imprinted into our memories and like, so so that's what we're really passionate about is that energy that you get from enjoying sport with other people and it's really unique and sport is you you can get it in a, watching concerts and going to festivals and stuff but the, the the thing about sport is it's completely unscripted it's this unscripted theatre that you know our head of content says not even Shakespeare could have written Zidane nothing matter at the internet. Right? <laughs> like it's too, yes. it's too crazy an idea. Absolutely. It's too crazy Absolutely. An idea. It's, uh, on the world cup final on that stage. It's too, it's too crazy. It's too inexplicable. So that's what we're really passionate about now to get to kind of what, what the business is and what we're doing. We're trying to build the world's largest global stadium, which is an accumulation of all of the sports bars, fan zones, locations where people can come together to enjoy sport so we have a platform for uh, bars b2b SaaS platform that helps bars organize market measure their sport um, basically a, a platform there to to help them make the most out of sports content so if you're a pub in the uk for example you're paying sky anywhere between 15 and 40 grand a year that's a lot of money now here's a platform that helps you manage that whole system create social media posts, publish fixtures to your website, every little tool there to really manage sport as a, as a part of your business. How, um, did, how, does, how do they do that? How would they do that? So they go into a portal on Matchpoint, which is which we call Pogba, um, where they log in, they see a list of all the fixtures that they can, they can show based on the channels they've got. They go, I'm showing that one. Um, that one in HD, that one on the big screen, etc., etc., etc. They can then print that off in PDF, send that around to their staff. They can that then automatically publishes their own website. They can then schedule social media posts, and we create all the imagery for them automatically through our software. They get a whole dashboard explaining to them what their most popular fixtures are, how many people are looking for them in their area. A whole set of, I mean, there's a, there's a load more tools in there. But Trying basically, to maximize what they have, basically. Exactly. How, how to make the most out of sport as an asset, right? Um, and that then also powers our B2C platform, which is a platform for sports fans to help them uh, find sports bars that are showing their specific events. So you are in Manchester and you want to watch the Roland Garros final, um, it'll tell you which bars around you are showing the game. Um, all of our products for our sports fans, which is a website and an app, are all about um, uh, yeah, all about facilitating and amplifying these social sports viewing occasions, getting your friends together to enjoy sport. 
Um, we also have within that a whole kind of gamification element and, and work we do with brands. So we do uh, a lot of work with the likes of Guinness. We do work with the NFL. We do work with, that is all, to give you an example, during the Six Nations, we have a thing called the Guinness Pint Predictor, which lives on our platform, uh, where people can predict who's going to win by how many points. And if they get it bang on, they get a free pint of Guinness. If they get it close, they get a free pint of Guinness they can give to a friend. They end up in leagues. They can play against Johnny Wilkinson. They can play against ex other rugby players. They can play against a whole great platform that really amplifies the Six Nations experience, sponsored by Guinness or, or, or on Match Pint, which has been a really exciting project for a few years. Um, that's really really cool that is really really cool actually yeah it's super fun to Sports give you a fans. bit more light on the on the kind of on, on the business and, and where we are and and the kind of size of it we've got just over 10,000 venues on the platform using that software um, that's across France GB Australia and Ireland um, and we're just expanding out into Italy and Germany at the moment. Nice. Um, and then pre-COVID, in the kind of twelve months to to, to, to the end to the start of COVID, we we had six and a half million fans use our platform. Pre-COVID. For the twelve months pre-COVID. For the twelve months pre-COVID. To have using a pub finder during COVID. Yeah. During well, well, yeah. <laughs> that, that's 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 been that's been quite quite quite. Um, Quite an episode the world has gone through. We'll get we'll, we'll we'll dig into that. We'll dig into that in a second. So that's a lot. This has gone from literally your university project yeah. till now. Yeah. Ten years on. Yeah. I would you still categorize yourself as a startup? Uh, I mean it's the it's the eternal question is what the head of startup is, right? I, I like there's a there's an interesting definition that I've heard of, of you know the difference between a startup is startup is trying to find product market fit and it's not about profit. It's not about, I don't think it's about that stuff. It's about like, can you find a repeatable model that you can like just pump money at? Now, not that that's the kind of aim within all these things. Parts of us, I would say was definitely still a startup in terms of like culture, in terms of the fast paced environment, in terms of the fun we're having. What I really love about Match Pint, and I know this is, self-indulgent because it's a business that, that I run, but there are kind of three great elements, which is that one, I get to work on something that we're really passionate about. So that question I was asking you earlier about, you know, can you think of your favorite moment favorite as moment. a sports fan? I asked that pretty much at the start of any like big commercial meeting and talking to the head of Sky or something. And you watch people's head go somewhere else, right? And they just think to themselves like, Shh, and they're so pumped, they're happy about thinking Because they can remember it, you took them back to that moment, you took them back to that moment. moment, right? France 98 final, whatever. And I'm genuinely fascinated about what the answer's gonna be. And I'm just, I'm genuinely engaged with that. And I, this is no offense to other businesses, right? But I know other people who have to like, really get pumped about HR software or, you yeah. know, like, that's, don't. <laughs> Look. We, we all get passionate about different things. You all get passionate about different Where, things. Where, no, where software, it's, it's also, it's great. I love it. I actually do. But that's really great. The second bit is that we're doing something, I mean, we're a business of you know, 30 odd people, but we're doing something that no one else in the world is doing. Like we're market leaders in, in, what? And in what we're doing. So like no one in the States is doing what we're doing to the level that we're doing it. No one in, you know, and that's kind of fun and exciting because we're not just having to copycat stuff. Yeah, we we're building our own business model that we have to, which is which is which is fun, right? And it's really exciting as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, can yeah. I, 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 I can already feel the adrenaline rush that it gives exactly. you all the time. Yeah, and I mean, and and I we work with great people, right? And re I really, I really, I really love getting up, getting to work on a project that. I love and getting yeah you know, being surrounded by people that I you know genuinely respect and, and love that, that are doing amazing things. I'm I'm very much one of those founders who just surrounded myself with people that are just far more intelligent and far more talented than I am and they're doing amazing work and so I'm, I'm kind of I get to enjoy watching that. Well, I think that's then it's it's actually you've retained the start of culture. You've retained that, which everyone says, you know, it's, it's just excitement. It's exactly what you're saying. It's, I'm going to get up every day, work on something, something I'm passionate about, something I'm really excited about. We 
but you're no longer trying to find your place in the market. That's no longer necessarily the challenge. Now it's about growing that. Mm. You already have your identity. That challenge is gone, I suppose. Or is it's it still that, there? Uh, no, it's, it's, you know what, it's, it's really still there. It's, it, part of it's not still there. So like, there's a side of things which is like, okay, we have a B2B SaaS business that, with, with the bars, right? Where we're signing up bars globally and getting them to use this software. That's kind of not, you know, that model is understood, but that's now like 40% of our revenue. Then we've got a whole bunch of stuff that we do with brands. Now at the moment, you know, over the last two, three years, we've really started working with broadcasters a lot. So Foxtel in Australia, Canal Plus in France, big broadcaster across Italy and Germany. Um, that's kind of like, we're finding our feet there. It's a really fast growing part of our business. We're now looking at how we work with rights holders. How do we work with La Liga? How do we work with Premier League? How do we work with Arsenal? That side of our business is really starts up because it's kind of like, well, we don't do this properly yet. We understand there's so much value that we can work with these people on, but that's kind of still, we're in total discovery and fast paced mode and, and really trying to figure out where our product market fit is within that, that realm. So the, ex the excitement stage has or phase hasn't really disappeared. That, that is, Never. that's pretty much there. How, you said you're about 30 old people now? Yeah. Um, about 30 old people, we've got, a, we've got a lot of positions that, that, are, that, are, that, are, that are, we're filling at the moment, like you know, having come out of COVID and growing into lots of new markets. There's a, there's a lot to, there's a lot of, of, of positions to fill. And, and yeah. What would those be? Those listening. So a lot of people will be listening to this, primarily tech people. What is it you're looking for at the moment? On the engineering side, uh, we're looking for a head of engineering. We're looking for uh, a junior front end, junior back end, a senior front end. Um, and we are looking for lots of other big positions. We're looking for a head of product. Um, that's obviously going to work very closely with, with the engineering team. And I really feel that yeah. we're a product led business. Um, and so everything the product and engineering are doing is really at the heart of how we grow as a business. Um, so there's kind of very exciting, very important roles there. And then we've also got a head of France that we're hiring, uh, a new head of France and a, and a head of commercial. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't end. <laughs> there's lots of roles. So those people, you're looking for those people. If I'm right now, if I'm a developer, yeah. uh, I used to be a very, very bad one once upon a time, so that doesn't apply nice. to me anymore. But if I was... Um, why would I want to join you guys? What, what's so special? I know from what you're telling me so far, it sounds great, but as a person, if I'm going to join and work here every day. I think getting to work on something that hopefully they're passionate about the topic, but like, you know, don't have to be, and I know that there's lots of great, great people on our team that aren't necessarily full out sports fans, public. There's something really exciting about working on something where you know that the customer, the, the venue, the fan, the pilot, that, that you're working within a realm where people are genuinely passionate about what you're building, right? And you're building this new piece of software that this sports fan's going crazy for and you see the reviews and you see the MBS go crazy. And you know, there's, there's something really lovely about working on someone's passion point because because it's exhilarating. Um, I mean, in terms of other stuff, the, especially in engineering, there's a really tight knit squad there. There's an incredible progression framework. There's lots of really fun stuff within that engineering team. We have like a 10% day. So one week out, one day out of every two weeks is 10%, which is uh, where the engineering team basically work on whatever they want to work on. It doesn't have to be match point related. It doesn't have to be basically whatever makes them progress. Whatever, like they get to pick, they start at the beginning of the day and go like, I want to work on, I'm a, I'm a backend developer. I want to work on, I want to test out my front end code. I'm going to try and build this like front end piece or I want to go and study Google Analytics for a day. That's they really, really cool. That is really cool actually. Yeah, it's yeah. really fun. And they, and the coolest stuff has come out of 10% day. Some stuff that someone just went like, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to create a trophies thing where people can become a local le legend of the local, of their, of their local venue. And someone built that in 10% day and it's gone out into production and it's working really well. So it's like a really fun, like it's a win, win, win across the company because people are doing really creative stuff. And yeah. You're letting their creativity roam free, basically. Yeah. You've got the opportunity. 
do whatever you want. Exactly that. That is re- that, that that is incredible. Now, question I want to ask from a technical point of view here, mm-hmm. um, as if I'm a developer, if I'm going to join, you guys are 10 years old. If I'm a developer, do I have to come in to potentially lots of issues that are 10 years old, but I would need to fix and I wouldn't have a clue where to start? Basically, firefighting everywhere. So, so had you asked me that question three years ago, I would have said, yeah, probably. <laughs> but Thank God we're not three years ago now. No, not three years ago. No, do you know what? Like, I think the, all of the platforms that we have, the, 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 there was a real migration within the matchmaking team. T- 10 years, you know, when we're talking about 10 years, we're talking about a 22-year-old 10 years ago who really didn't know what he was doing, outsourced his engineering team to Argentina. You know, th- there's a lot of stuff that happened there. Actually, over the last five years, we've had our engineering team in-house and we've really started to build you know, our main platforms. Our website is new since four months ago. Um, our pub platform is new from two years ago. Uh, we've just done database migration. We've just done, all of the stuff is 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 new. The, our whole system is new from like three years ago, and we are, our real strategy is not to deprecate any of that stuff. We're really really solid foundations um, that that create as, as as little technical debt as we possibly can. So, what have been then? Let's just jump into something. You know, uh, put you on the spot in a way. What have been your big? Forget COVID. COVID aside, we'll get we'll get yeah, into yeah, that. Yeah. What have been your some of the biggest challenges you've faced? You said that you started this as a twenty-year-old guy. Yeah. So surely, this has been one hell of a ride. It's so been far. one hell of a ride. It's been one hell of a ride. Biggest challenges. Biggest challenges. It's a difficult question. I guess. Um, you know, you look at what we've built now and it's difficult, right? Because at the start, this looks like so much and it's quite daunting at the start, but you just do every small task and you get to somewhere big, right? Oh, what we really need is a head of engineering. What we really need is uh, someone who can do tax. Like, you know, nothing was... The biggest challenges we've had as a business, back in 2015, we were negotiating a big deal with... Sky, I don't mind saying this, uh, right. that lasted an 18-month negotiation that took up all of our resource, all of our energy. And by the end, they pulled the plug on it last minute. Thank God. I would, if we'd signed that deal, we would be in the worst place ever. Um, and by the end of the deal, we'd, you know, we'd basically almost run out of money. We were like three weeks away from not being able to pay salaries. And that was the first and only time I've ever thought, this may not work out. This is, we may be, I what may happened be, then? I may be deployed in four weeks and figuring out what we're doing. How'd you turn it around? It was a massive moment of change in our business where Dom and I used to shoulder a lot of the burdens of the business. We used to be like, well, we, you know, investment, no, 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 we don't need to tell like the whole team about this because they don't really need to, like, they can't really affect change within this environment, so what does it matter? Actually, we had three weeks of money left and we told everything to the team. We were like, guys, this is the position. This is what it is. Now, we've got this like one small plan where we're going to try and eke out this, this and that. If everyone smashes their work over the next four weeks, that might move our cash out date by like three weeks, which would give us just enough time to get this deal away with investors. No, 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 no. And we just hustled the amazing thing. And we thought, Dom and I were like, well, if we tell the team, they'll probably like all start Quick. thinking about, you know, like shit, I'm going to stop working for the next three weeks and to find another job. Totally the opposite re- reaction. Everyone like really knuckled down. And everyone was like, no, we're going to work incredibly hard to make this company survive. And since that day, back in 2015, uh, we've had you know one of our core values has been transparency and we have a session on a Friday where everyone in the company can ask anybody in the company any question right mainly sometimes to Dom and I and say like what's happening here what's happening there and we have to be as like honest as we can possibly be because if you're transparent it creates way a way stronger bond and a way greater ability to to move forwards as a unit and, and you know and really achieve some some great things so We've learned some some big lessons, but that one was that one was a was a big one. Incredible! That that's that yeah. That's not that's not something you you could. That's not. I mean, lots of startups go through 
similar things, but the fact that I suppose my 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 thought on that is how much the team believed in you and Don basically the way you guys have the culture that have you instilled in this company because yeah I, I, I'm thinking to myself in almost any of the companies I've worked at previously I would have literally been okay fine three weeks I'm interviewing as of tomorrow mm. so mm. credit yeah. to you guys on the, on the culture that you created for that. and credit to the team that we put together right credit to the team who would just just great people like you know there's a there's a thing in uh, in a book called legacy by um uh i can't remember his name but he's talking about the new zealand rugby team and one of the rules in the new zealand rugby team is no dickheads right but it's like an interesting thing of before any criteria of hires like there's just a there's a cultural piece that you have to that you have to, to to get right and and i think that's where the credit to is, is we built a team of like just great people. Like wh- another one of our values, and I can go through all of them, right? But it's like be human, and being human is showing vulnerability. And I think we showed vulnerability, and then everyone showed strength back, and it was, and it's been a great lesson. Right? That's the that's the nice thing. Fantastic. That's that's to be honest. That's that's actually part of the startup culture. This is what sets. This is when people say startups. It's it's no longer just the. It's no longer just the you know um, two people out of their uh, upstairs bedroom basically starting something. It's no longer that. It's that culture that everybody comes together. We all work hard. We all push things further. And yeah, that that sounds exactly. You guys are still embodying that culture. Hats <laughs> off to you guys on that. Um, COVID. COVID. That's been. Where, where, where to start we can't I don't have the, the right words uh, to describe what kind of a year that has been the people who have suffered um, but you know for you guys as a business that thrives on social interaction face to face interaction mm. how, what's the effect of COVID has been do you know what this is maybe my desperately optimistic outlook right but uh, don't get me wrong huge challenge we work between sport and hospitality. Our industries were shaken, like would shook up in a, in a big way. But we very quickly reacted and realized, you know, we had to make a decision. Do we try and build a business that tries to uh, serve the COVID related experience? Are we trying to like virtually bring people together to enjoy sport? Are we building a kind of like f- online chat room or are we trying to build a stronger business for a post-COVID world, right? And so that's, that's a really binary decision that you can make, right? Do we invest our resources into trying to create this thing that works for COVID while well, people can't come together? Or we went for the latter. And I think actually we found ourselves in a, it was a really tough first month, right? And having to make some really difficult decisions. We actually ended up making a lot of difficult decisions before they announced furlough. Then they announced furlough, we brought everyone back on. Put them on furlough, find it, you know, but it, there was some heart wrenching torment in there, and we got to bring it back, which was great. Because a business like you guys, you depend on, you know, people going out. Yeah, we depend on sport being on TV, and we depend on on on, on pubs being open and, and all this stuff. But actually, we had an opportunity there to work on so much stuff that we never had an opportunity to work on. So with no customers, no clients, we put them all on payment freeze. And we had an opportunity, we all sat in the room, all the engineering team, the product team, um, and we were like, right, let's go through a week and a half sprint process and figure out all of the things that we want to build. Let's go through a giant like team prioritization thing. And then we got to build all of these great pieces of software and projects that you know do a whole re- like rebrand piece. All the stuff that we'd always wanted to do, but we never had time to do. So actually, and our CFO was amazing and, you know, we've actually ended up in a position where we we're really healthy financially off the back of finding investment using the future fund, lots of the opportunities there, but we're now in a financially really strong position and we had this whole time to build all of the things that we've always really wanted to build that gave us an opportunity to be a much stronger business coming out of COVID. And well, that's you're really hiring six people now. Sorry? You're hiring at least six people. So, right. you know, the so fact there's, that, that. there's uh, things going on. So you saw basically the biggest pandemic possibly take humanity. Uh, you said, okay, there's an opportunity here. I'm going to take it. Yeah. 
Let's yeah. make let's let's turn this negative into a positive. Life gives you lemons. Make some <laughs> lemonade. Okay. Um, what's the future for Matchpoint going forward? What what what? Where do you see this? I know you're trying to build the mm. I know the world's uh, biggest global stadium. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we going? I mean, listen. There's a lot on at the moment. We've got, as I said, we're growing into Italy and Germany. Um, the France business. So the fun thing is we actually bought a business in France back in 2019, um, which was actually a business that was built before us that actually I sort of met back in 2007 when I was working that bar. Someone came in and was like, we want to add you to this list of best sports bars in Paris. That was for that business. And then 10 years late, 12 years later, we bought that business, which is so much fun <laughs> as an idea. And the guys who founded it are amazing people. Um, this is a movie. This is I. This this the, honestly, this is a movie. The Match Point movie. The Match Point movie. So that that's been. A, so we've got this global expansion play. The Australian business is going really well. I think it won't be immensely long until they move into New Zealand. Um, in terms of, as I said, we're a really product led business, uh, and what we need to do, you know, we're really a product about bringing fans together. I think we want to make our product more social. We have a real opportunity to when the match might be successful you're, you're bringing a whole room of sports fans together to enjoy sport right how do we convert that occasion into virality so to make sure that everyone when they leave the bar is all got match pine because their friend gave it to them and then no, no, no. so there's a whole opportunity product wise to make a much more social product and therefore create better network effects and better virality i think on the scale of You know, if you take a yellow page, like booking.com versus Airbnb or yellow pages versus, uh, versus. I'm trying to think of that as well. What would it Yellow pages versus, uh, box, I don't know. Um, <laughs> not open table or, you know, the, the difference in terms of tool versus community tribe, right? Yeah. Matchpoint needs to be a tribe. People, it's not just a tool that I go to. It's the first thing I think of when I want to watch sport is match point. How am I, how are they going to be part of my experience and how am I, how am I going to use that to find out what's on and bring my fan, my friends together to enjoy that great game. Right. So I guess what I'm talking about there is, is some of the pillars of what we're doing with our product is make ourselves more tribal, make ourselves more engaging, you know, really help sports fans enjoy great moments. And when I say that, We're in a world at the moment where some digital products are, like, are causing potential quite a lot of torment to society. I'm not like shitting all over Facebook or, or Instagram or whatever, but there is a there's a debate there, right? About like are these social platforms that are you know really social, are they making people more lonely? Are they making people actually less social? You know? oh, Whereas actually think, yeah. the successful that you know. Match point's only successful if I bring people together physically to, to share great moments. If And that's what we really want to do, right? So I think there's some good in that. I think there is, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially now after COVID. They can be, I mean, look, coming, we would pro I would probably be biased. I'm still looking around about we're trying to, we, we create this community field. So I, so I am all for what you're saying, 100%. Yeah. But, You know, from the first from the first time we well not met, virtually met because it was COVID, yeah. And you were talking about the global stadium. Uh, I thought that was a fantastic idea, and I actually thought I thought this was at the time one of the coolest companies and ideas I've come across. And yeah, 12 months on after COVID, it's it's as cool as ever. Honestly, I I, I am very excited to see how this will go in the future. I uh, definitely. Because there isn't really isn't anything like it. There really isn't anything like it. I mean, you're, if I want to go, it's like okay, I'm going to go to Google. Where can I watch the game? And I'll start messaging guys on the group, etc. But what you guys have done is found that niche and create a community around it. It's great, and uh, thanks, Mister. That's really kind. But yeah, I, and I'm, I'm. You know what? I'm as pumped as you are. I'm actually more pumped. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you would, you, you would, <laughs> you would be, you would be. Yeah. Um, Leo, honestly, thank you very much for this. It's great. My absolute pleasure. Uh, it's great to have you here on this podcast. Um, I know a lot of people will be jumping uh, to have a chat, find out a bit more about about this. 
Uh, we'll certainly be sharing it with the community, letting everybody know about it. Um, and hopefully next time we invite you to this podcast, we'll be, we'll be closer and the, big, and the global stadium will be much bigger. We'll be in the global stadium, we'll have to find another planet. To, to, to <laughs> fingers okay. crossed, fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Thank you very much, Leo. Take Cheers. care.